Hi, my name is Mandis Mombach, and I am a Principal Solutions Architect with AWS. And I'm joined by Carmen Pucho, who is also an AWS Principal Architect. Throughout this video series that we have done, we have spoken about containerization and digital modernization. And specifically in this video, we are going to talk about how to take a container image that we pre-built using the Docker tools and deploy that to the ECS Fargate service in AWS and how we can scale that into multiple environments and more effectively for our customers. So Carmen, can you take us through what Fargate is and how it works and how you can use it in your environment? Absolutely. So you've built your application and in our case, it's the pet store and you've pushed it up to an image repository, but now you need to get it out in the wild for your users to consume. Amazon has a service called ECS, or Elastic uh, Container Service. And that is the version where you manage the, the cluster yourself. So there's a control plane which handles things like scheduling of your task. And then there's the, the portion that you control, which is the actual nodes. And that's where the tasks live, or the containers live. It was last year at reInvent, we released a service called AWS Fargate, which is essentially the same thing as ECS, but it's a managed version. So now you as a developer only have to care about the application components, and you're not necessarily concerned about the heavy lifting of managing infrastructure. So for AWS Fargate, the model to deploy your application is exactly the same. You're using something that's called a task definition. So we're going to walk you through a task definition and how you take your pet store application, define it inside of a task definition, and then deploy it into ECS Fargate. So the first thing I want to call out is the concept of a cluster. So inside of ECS, there's a concept of a cluster, and that is essentially a grouping of your application or tasks and services, and you can mix them together. So for your Windows applications, you need to run Windows-specific tasks, but in the context of Fargate, which only works with Linux today, you, you can run Fargate tasks and classic ECX tasks side by side, and it's essentially a grouping. The next thing you're gonna do is get your task definition and we'll walk you through that. And then inside of that is your container definition. All the things that are unique about your, your container, the configuration, your environment variables. And the last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna define your service. And your service is essentially how much do you need of the application? You define things around auto scaling, you define how many versions or, or copies of the task that you want running, and you deploy that as part of your, your overall uh, application deployment into ECS Fargate. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our task definition. And I just want to call out the experience is supposed to be the same. So if you're a developer and you were using ECS Classic, moving your tasks over to Fargate is actually a very easy process because all of the parameters around defining your application are exactly the same. At a very high level, and we document this thoroughly, there's some small changes. And the, the, the most obvious one is the one you're seeing here, which is the require compatibility. If you declare it as a Fargate task, it runs in Fargate. And if you declare it as EC2, it runs in classic EC2. But as you can see here, very similar to our Docker Compose file, we have the application defined as separate layers. We have our pet store layer and all of the aspects about the application that are unique to pet store. Things like where the registry is, how much memory and CPU, environment variables, and then the exact same thing from the Postgres perspective. So to get the application up and running, now that we have our task definition defined, it's a simple process where you need to register your task definition. All right, so we've deployed our task definition up into AWS. And just to, just to think about it, it's essentially your blueprint. It's everything that you need to get your application running up in a container, but it's not actually deployed. There's no service running. So we now need to go in and we need to actually build the service out. So if you followed through the lab, you should have the pet store application up and running inside of ECS Fargate. And we're going to take a look into all the components of how you can actually visualize the application and ensure that it's running correctly. At, at its top level, what you'll see here is you'll see the application, it, you'll see that it's sitting behind a load balancer, you'll see that it's sitting in the security groups that you defined, and what you'll see is the task. So the service creates the task, and here we only have one task running, and if you click into it, what you're seeing is you're seeing that it's using the task definition that we declared earlier, and you can see here that you can actually see both containers. You can see the Postgres container, and you can see the pet store container. The interesting thing about this is, and if you think about this at scale, and you think about this application running hundreds and thousands of times, um, you want those logs to go in a centralized place. So as part of a task definition, and as part of, of ECS Fargate, you have the ability to push your logs into CloudWatch. And it's very simple to do. If you take a look at the CloudWatch uh, configuration inside the task definition, it's as simple as defining the log driver of AWS logs, and it's as simple as defining the, the region and the prefix. 
And then from there, assuming that you have the permissions, you can push those logs out to a centralized repo for applications, uh, the partner solutions, or even maybe our own Elasticsearch Kibana solution to consume them and visualize them to understand what's going on with your application. So if you take a look here, here's a very simplistic view. Here's our pet store application. And what you're seeing is the task actually emulating or pushing those logs out so you can visualize them right here in the console. You can see the ELB health check hitting it. And what's happening here is Wildfly, when we configured Wildfly earlier in the standalone XML, we're using standard out to push these HTTP logs to, to over standard out, which pushes them into CloudWatch. And if you take a look over here at the load balancer, you can see the load balancer is up and running, and here is our pet store. Right, so ECS will make sure that every time one of our tasks get launched to Fargate, it connects that back end to our load balancer automatically. We don't manually need to go and Correct. do that. Correct, yeah. The, the load balancer manages the health of the task. It's ensuring that it's up and running at all times, and that's why we set that health check grace period earlier to make sure that the container was up and running before the load balancer starts to inspect it. Okay. And also the logging seems interesting to me because we actually have two containers running inside of this task definition. Mm -hmm. Do we have portability or the configurability to make sure that both containers don't log to the same output. We rather two different different streams. Yeah, absolutely. So you can define that inside of your task definition. You can easily send them to separate locations if you choose to. In our example, we just chose to throw everything into a singular log group called Pet Store. So why would it be important for me to have a centralized logging location? So if you think about it, it's not going to be just this application. It's going to be this application at scale. It could be deployed 100 times. It could be deployed 1,000 times. But you're going to have other applications as your monolith gets decoupled and broken apart. So as you get more and more layers into your microservice, you want to understand what's going on holistically inside your application. And you want to put that in a centralized repository so you can inspect your application and see any area of the application at any given point. Thank you very much, Carmen. You're welcome. So in this workshop, we took the container that we built earlier and we placed it in ECR and then we took it from ECR and deployed it at scale using the ECS container orchestration system. This allows us to deploy our application at scale and monitor that application successfully at scale as well to make sure that our application is always available to our customers. But we did it in a specific way where the developer always has ownership and responsibility for the environment that it'll end up running in. And they do that through the task definition. And the task definition now certainly becomes a part of the original source code of that application. So when Carmen passes that application over to me or to any other one of the developers in our team, we're able to just bring up the exact same environment and develop against that environment. So in our next video, we're going to talk about how you can do something similar and orchestrate your application, but not using ECS, but rather using our Kubernetes service on AWS. So follow the links below to watch how to deploy a container at scale using Kubernetes.